we live in a world that is dynamic and in color. But why is vision testing still in black and white and static? To answer these questions, we must first understand two concepts, the biology of the human eye and the mechanics of vision testing. To understand how we see, we need to realize that the eye is a biological machine. The eye is a sphere with four primary parts which determine the quality of our vision, the cornea, lens, retina, and fovea. The cornea is a dome-shaped cover at the front of the eye that protects the pupil and iris and bends light to help the eye focus. The pupil is the black opening at the center of the cornea that allows light to enter the eye. The iris is the colored circle that surrounds the pupil and adjusts its size to control the amount of light entering through the pupil. As light passes through the lens, it is focused on the central rear area of the retina called the fovea. That light first passes through a layer of nerve cells until it reaches the color-sensitive cone-shaped photoreceptor cells in the fovea. Also in the retina and surrounding the fovea are rod-shaped photoreceptors, which are sensitive only to the intensity of light. The cone-shaped photoreceptor cells of the fovea respond to the colors of red, green, and blue. Those cone-shaped photoreceptor cells function much like pixels of colored light in an electronic display. The response of the red, green, and blue light is transmitted forward to the neural ganglia layer of cells, which combines the signal of 100 photoreceptors to send a specific color and intensity to the brain via each optic nerve fiber. Acuity is the measure of your visual clarity. As light passes through the biological lens, the lens changes its shape to have that image focused on the fovea. That's the central area in the back of the retina. The proper focus of that image is what lets you see clearly. Accommodation is the process of the lens automatically changing its shape to enable that image to be focused on the back of the eye. When looking at distant images, the shape of the lens is flattened. When looking at near images, the shape of the lens becomes rounded. Changes in the alignment of the lens also affects acuity. Refraction is the process of a doctor using spherical, cylinder, and axis lenses to measure and compensate for optical errors in a patient's eye. Refraction also compensates for the misaligned angle of the shape of the lens. Cylinder compensates for the forward or backward tilt of the biological lens. Axis compensates for the horizontal misalignment of the biological lens. But why do the cone-shaped photoreceptors in the fovea respond to the specific colors of red, green, and blue? As light passes through the lens, each color of light has a different focal depth in relation to the retina. Blue is focused in front of the fovea, green is focused on the fovea, red is focused behind the fovea. Visual acuity is regulated by the relative focal depths of those colors as perceived by the blue, green, and red sensitive photoreceptors in the fovea at the back of the retina. The relative focal depths of the colors blue, green, and red results in the muscles controlling the lens to adjust its shape and the focus of the image on the fovea. That process is called chromatic triangulation. Measuring visual clarity is a function of the size of the image and the viewing distance. The original vision test was being able to spot the stars in the Big Dipper. The acuity endpoint is the smallest arc width image identifiable at a specific distance. Good acuity also lets people spot predators and game so they can eat rather than be eaten. The current global standard for vision testing was created by Dr. Herman Snell 160 years ago using European style letters for measuring acuity and refractions. That 1862 Snellen test was a major technical achievement, but it requires literacy with European style letters. It also measures vision only in black and white. It is difficult to use with children or infants. 
it uses irregular stimulus targets. And it is inherently imprecise due to the stimulus gap of the letters being too large. Snell and methodology also requires patients to correctly guess the identity of four out of five irregular letters on a line to correctly determine their acuity. As a result, it frequently leads to prescription errors. Snell and vision testing also consistently adds excess minus power and results in overcorrecting acuity and refractions by depleting the refresh and dynamic responsiveness of the photoreceptors. That overcorrected and inconsistent Snell and testing may also be a factor in the global epidemic of myopia. Myopia is the difficulty in clearly seeing distant objects. Myopia is also the most frequent reason for needing vision corrections and affects 22% of the world's population. The solution? Introducing the DIOP, the 21st century method of dynamically measuring vision and measuring it in color. A DIOP is a spinning segmented ring used as a visual target. A DIOP uses vision physiology rather than culturally dependent letters to measure acuity. The smallest diameter DIOP detected as spinning is the acuity endpoint, much as is the smallest letter being identified in a Snellen test. When using a DIOP for vision testing, two DIOP rings are displayed, but only one of the DIOP rings is spinning. The patient is asked, which ring is spinning, the left ring or the right ring? If the patient doesn't see either ring is spinning, then both rings are made sufficiently larger until a spinning ring is detected. If a diop ring is detected as spinning, then both rings are incrementally made smaller as the spin location and or direction is randomly switched until a spinning ring cannot be detected. Diop subacuity is any diameter where the spinning ring is too small for spinning to be detected. Increasing the diop diameter from a subacuity size to the next largest diameter where spinning can be detected verifies that next larger size as the acuity endpoint, the smallest diameter diop where spinning can be detected. To prevent guessing, false positives are easily detected by asking the patient, is the diop ring spinning clockwise or counterclockwise? The result is that diop testing provides a rapid, precise, and consistent measure of acuity, regardless of patient literacy, culture, or age. DIOP research has consistently shown that Snellen testing overcorrects acuity measurement by adding excess spherical power and may be a contributing factor in the global epidemic of myopia. One of the other problems with Snellen testing is that we don't actually see black. Snell and acuity measurement is made possible by the identification of the static white gaps in the Snell and letters and not the black letters. Snell and letters and similar static visual targets have excessively large gaps. The Snell and stimulus gap is 1.0 arc minute squared. Diop acuity measurement is made possible by detection of the motion of the gaps in the diop visual target. A diop has smaller spinning gaps which provide a strobic stimulus to the photoreceptors. That diop stimulus gap is 0.54 arc minutes squared. The increased precision, accuracy, and efficiency of a diop is likely due to the diop stimulus gap being half of the area of the Snellen stimulus gap. As a result, diop acuity testing is up to six times more accurate than standard Snellen testing. Diop acuity testing is up to eight times more precise than standard Snellen testing. Diop testing is also typically twice as efficient as Snellen testing. Diop acuity tests typically take only 10 to 20 seconds per eye. Diop refractions typically take only 90 to 180 seconds per eye. 
However, not everyone sees color in the same way. Individuals with a stable near image typically have a 50% red and 45% green ratio of photoreceptors. Individuals with near vision stress typically have a 75% red and 20% green ratio of photoreceptors. The current functioning of the eye developed about 300,000 years ago, but humans have only been reading letter-based words for about 3,500 years. A stable near image facilitates reading letter-based words. However, near vision stress facilitates a stable distance image. Prior to 3,500 years ago, individuals with a stable distance image had a survival advantage in spotting predators, game, and other threatening tribes. Cultures with near vision stress also tend to use pictographic words. The effect of color perception is illustrated by a condition called dyslexia. Dyslexia is the reduced ability to read letter-based words which seem to be associated with near vision stress. Dyslexia is a literacy problem and seems to have little to do with reduced intelligence. A simple and rapid use of a DIOP color test can be used to indicate visual stress by comparing the response to a spinning blue on black DIOP versus a spinning green on white DIOP. As the identical size diops get smaller, or you move away from the screen, which diop ring are you better able to see as spinning, the blue or the green? Being better able to see the smaller spinning green on white diop rather than the spinning blue on black diop indicates a stable near image. Being better able to see the smaller spinning blue on black diop rather than the spinning green on white diop indicates near vision stress. Having near vision stress indicates that a person likely has potential symptoms of dyslexia and possibly symptoms of migraines or epilepsy. How well does the color screening test work? The diop color screening test with a blue on black versus a green on white spinning diop has a 90% correlation for diagnosed symptoms of dyslexia. Diop vision testing is also possible with infants as young as 14 weeks of age. Diop testing for large groups may be done easily and rapidly by comparing the diop diameter where spinning is first detected versus the diop viewing distance. Diop testing for low vision is inherently more precise than Snellen testing because the diop test doesn't have the bloated logarithmic curve of a Snellen test. Our goal is for the diop test to become the 21st century standard for global vision testing. Welcome to the Diop Revolution, helping the world see clearly one person at a time.